Sky met all while I went missing on November 6, 2011, from Bellevue, Washington. He was two years old when he went missing. He hasn't been seen since. Customary warning. Long time lurker, first time poster, open to constructive criticism. This case hits very close to home, as I grew up in Redmond, Washington, the same town where Sky was living when he was missing. His disappearance has been posted about before on this forum but it's been over a year since his last post. Location of abduction approximately 15 minutes from Seattle, Bellevue is the sixth wealthiest community in Washington state. Bellevue is generally regarded as a very safe city. In fact, in 2006 Bellevue was rated one of the top 25 safest cities in America based on per capita incidence of violent crime. The towns of Redmond and Bellevue border one another and both are very white color with Redmond being the Microsoft headquarters and both cities being very close to Boeing, Amazon and numerous tech companies. I'm not sure the last time a child went missing from either Redmond or Bellevue but I can tell you that it's extremely unusual for a child to be abducted from that area. Sky's disappearance on the morning of November 6, 2011, Sky's mother, Julia Beryakova, decided to drive Sky from their home in Redmond, Washington to Over Lake Medical Center in Bellevue, claiming he was sick. Sky's older sister Mayle, who was four at the time, was also in the car. I'm not sure where in Redmond they were coming from but I guess the drive couldn't be more than 20 minutes or so. On their way to the hospital, Beryakova claims her car ran out of gas so she pulled over to the side of the road. Leaving Sky asleep and strapped in his car seat, Julia and Mayle began their trek to the closest gas station. Julia states she left her cell phone at home that morning so wasn't able to call anyone for help. Her car was left along the 2600 block of 100 Wealth Street and he in Bellevue. This road runs parallel to State Route 520, a busy highway. The east side of 100 Wealth Street is flanked by a large concrete sound barrier that separates the road from the highway. The west side of the road is a dense wooded area. Julian and Mail walk 1.6 km to a Chevron station north of where the car was left. This took approximately one hour. Julia called a friend from the gas station, who then picked them up and drove them back to the car. Upon returning to the car, Sky was nowhere to be found. Julia called 911 using her friend's phone I assume, and reported him missing. The investigation immediately after his disappearance, searchers combed the area but found nothing of interest related to Sky's disappearance. Beryakova talked with police on the day of Sky's disappearance. However, that was the only time she cooperated after that day. When questioned by investigators, Beryakova refused to answer their questions, invoking her Fifth Amendment rights. She also refused a polygraph test. To this day she refuses to cooperate with investigators or be interviewed. Five years after Sky's disappearance, the Bellevue Police Chief, Steve Milet, made a public plea to Sky's mother Julia. The employees of the Bellevue Police Department will not stop searching for Sky, but I cannot emphasize enough the role you play in successfully locating your little boy. As you know, Many people have been impacted by Sky's disappearance and I know they would all welcome your active participation in this investigation. Julia has not talked with investigators since a day Sky went missing, despite many public pleas by the police department. Solomon took a lie detector test and results were inconclusive. He volunteered to take a second test but I'm unsure of the results. Solomon has continued to cooperate with investigators and has made repeated pleas to the public for info on his son's disappearance. Interesting tidbits when Julia returned to the car and f-
When Julia returned to the car and found Sky missing, she arrived with no gas can or other means to fill the gas tank. Investigators found the car to have an adequate amount of gas and was in otherwise working order. There was no indication of forced entry into the car. Biryakova was in the midst of a messy divorce with the children's father, Solomon Medalwala. The couple had a history of making many claims about one another. She claimed Solomon was abusive and said she feared for her life. He claimed that she was lying and Biryakova was mentally unstable. Records show Biryakova had been diagnosed with severe OCD, had frequently been admitted to inpatient psychiatric facilities the first time being in 2010 after telling her husband she dreamt of killing the children. Solomon filed for divorce shortly after this. Unsurprisingly the divorce between Solomon and Julia was a messy one. Despite many back and forth claims about one another, in September 2010 the courts gave Beryakova full custody of the children, with no visitation rights for Solomon Metalwala. Metalwala continued to fight to see his children. Shortly before Sky's disappearance, a court-ordered mediation concluded that Julia would retain custody of the children with Solomon receiving full visitation rights. Well, both parents originally agreed to this, on November 3rd Julia called her lawyer and voided the agreement. This was three days before Sky's disappearance. After Sky's disappearance, Solomon was granted full custody of Sky's sister Mail. Mail remains in his custody to this day. In December 2014 Julia remarried this time to Alan J. Morgan, a convicted felon. They had a child together in July 2015 a boy named Elijah. When the child was four months old, a CPS report was made listing the child as at risk. I'm not sure of details or the outcome of this report or whether Julia still has custody. When Sky was just two months old, both parents were charged with reckless endangerment after leaving him in the car in a Target parking lot while they shopped. They told police they had only been shopping for a few minutes but security footage shows them leaving Sky alone in the car for 55 minutes. The temperature outside was 27 F that day 5 below freezing. An episode of Law Ampersand Order that was eerily similar to Sky's disappearance aired locally the night before Sky's disappearance. According to Solomon, this was Julia's favorite show. It seems obvious that Julia had something to do with Sky's disappearance and he likely was never in the car on the day he was reported missing. But where is he now? Theories are numerous and include the following. Sky was accidentally killed and Julia tried to hide this when the courts gave Solomon visitation rights. Sky was killed on purpose to get back at Solomon. Sky is alive and was sent to Ukraine with Julia's dad who lives in Ukraine but had visited them in the US not long before Sky's disappearance. There is so much more to this story. This is your fair warning. The rabbit hole is deep. That is all for now. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for listening and please subscribe. Till next time.